from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 11 p.m. Southern California is bracing for more rain. Tonight, people in the Woolsey Fire burn area are stacking sandbags, taking some other precautions, just in case the storm causes mudslides. Now, another dangerous storm could make things even more worse for fire victims. Yes, from Malibu to Agoura Hills, homeowners are bracing for the next round of wet weather and the dangers it could bring. We have team coverage, including CBS2 meteorologist Evelyn Taft tracking the storm. But let's begin with Jeff Nguyen, who is live in Agoura Hills. Jeff? Jeff and Pat, this is Fire Station 89, where the captain tells us that in the past several days, a lot of people have been coming by to pick up and fill these sandbags. So much so that they've had to refill this three times since Saturday. Tonight, Rick Chancellor and his friends placed sandbags at and around his home, which sits below this hill. It's in the Malibu Lake area, which was hit hard by the Woolsey fire. But now the concern shifts to the rain that's coming our way and the possibility of mudslides and flooding after flames destroyed homes here. We've got um, hazardous materials here as well, so, so that's, that's definitely an issue. That's why about 500 sandbags have been filled in recent days at Fire Station 65 in Agora Hills. Greg Doddle says Chancellor's a friend of Boy Scout Troop 485. So they rounded up about a dozen kids to help. When people are in need, especially when our community has had a fire and now potential flooding, always willing to help. I love helping the community. In daylight, we got to see the devastation left by the wildfire in the canyon areas of Malibu, where a horse trailer was used to haul sandbags. And crews worked to restore power that was knocked out. Back in Agoura Hills, Kelly McCoo got herself some extra sandbags at Station 89 for her business, which sits next to a charred hillside. I've been cleaning everything, and it's just, it's still the smoke smell is everywhere. You got to be overprepared, not underprepared. You know, be proactive. And if you need them, sandbags will be available at fire stations for LA and Ventura counties within the burn areas. For now, we're live in Agoura Hills. Jeff Nguyen, CBS2 News. All right, Jeff. Well, storm preps were underway all day in Lake Elsinore near the Holy Fire Burn area. Concern is high for thunderstorms, so authorities in Orange and Riverside counties issued voluntary evacuation warnings for folks in that burn area ahead of tomorrow's storm. The rain that's headed here is already hitting the Bay Area. This is video of the storm tonight in Berkeley, where it was cold and rainy. Well, let's turn now to CBS 2's Evelyn Taft, who's tracking the rain as it makes its way down south. Evelyn. And Pat, Jeff, as we get a look at the big picture right now, you'll see that rain we were just referring to in the Bay Area, sitting over the East Bay, South Bay, and even some rain showers starting to come over the Monterey Bay. We're expecting more of this rain to slide from the Pacific Northwest into Northern California and eventually making its way to Southern California late tomorrow into your Thursday. We have flash flood watches already up for parts of the Inland Empire and Orange County. And of course, burn areas, a very big concern for the Woolsey and Hill fires. We're going to have more on all of it coming up in just a little bit. Back to you. Searching for closure tonight, a vigil for healing was held at Cal State Channel Islands to honor the victims of the borderline shooting and the wildfires. Students didn't get to mourn right away because the fires forced them to evacuate. Now, all of this comes as we learn new information about the suspect shooter who killed 12 people inside the bar. Investigators say the gunman had a massive amount of weapons and ambush police officers. CBS 2's Hermela Arogawi is live. She's in Thousand Oaks to give us details. Hermela. Good evening. As friends and family continue to come by this vigil and mourn these 12 lives, we learn some frightening details that Ian Long was heavily armed, carrying enough ammunition to kill dozens more. Investigators say Marine veteran Ian Long fired more than 50 rounds inside the borderline bar and still had 150 more rounds when Sergeant Ron Helis and a CHP officer arrived. The suspect ambushed the officers almost immediately. Long killed Helis and 11 patrons. One victim was shot once and stabbed in the neck. Long had brought in a folding knife and a slew of other weapons, a semi-automatic pistol with a flashlight and laser attached, and smoke grenades. Which contributed significantly 
to the chaos and confusion inside. Investigators say Long's pistol was legal in California, but his ammunition was not. They say he could have possibly gotten it from neighboring states. Susan Orfanos lost her son Telemachus in the shooting and has been calling for stricter gun control. I'm asking you to learn what you can do. Look at your children. Ask if it's worth it to them to take some steps to mitigate gun violence and to stop it. But Ava Wood, who lost two close friends in the shooting, says the damage is done. It was the person behind the gun that really did the damage, not the gun itself. Investigators say they still don't have a motive and are no closer to one than they were the day of the shooting. Live in Thousand Oaks, Hermela Aragawi, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Hermela. Now, a rash of car thefts in Moreno Valley. It looks like the same crew of bandits are behind all of them. CBS 2's Nicole Comstock is live with that story. Nicole? Yeah, Pat, one of the victims tells us she had her car parked right there across the street, and when she woke up the next morning, it was gone. Well, first she filed a police report, and then she went to Facebook. That's where she says she saw what she believes was her stolen car being used in another similar crime that was caught on camera. This security video has been circulating on Facebook. The homeowner says the guys inside this white Honda are here to steal her car. It didn't even have a battery, so they got creative. Watch them coast the car down the driveway and then use the Honda to push it down the street. They tried pushing it with the whole car, like from the back with my car, with my baby. Kelsey believes this is her 2000 Honda Civic with black door handles and trim, which she lovingly named L. It was stolen the same morning, just a couple of miles away in Moreno Valley. I'm not going to give up on my car. Like, I paid for that thing. I worked hard for it. And it seems that a couple of thieves have also been working hard to steal a handful of cars in town. The rash of car theft started Thanksgiving morning when another white car, possibly a Mitsubishi, pulls up to this Moreno Valley home. They're caught on camera driving away with this car. Then, just down the street, what appears to be that same white car pulls up at another home and takes another car. And the victims have since pointed out that although the cars they're driving are different, the man in this video taken early Tuesday morning appears to be wearing the same hat and jacket as the man in the video taken on Thanksgiving. Supposedly five cars? That's what the, the, the cops told me. It was five cars that's been um, stolen. In just as many days, all within a few miles of each other, all at around 3 o'clock in the morning in Moreno Valley. I hope my car is the last car that they will ever take. And the Moreno Valley Police Department would like to hear from you if you have any information about these cases. In Moreno Valley, Nicole Comstock, CBS 2 News. Nicole, thank you. A huge victory tonight for a group of mobile home tenants in Long Beach. They say they've been living in squalor and their landlords have refused to help. Dozens of residents of the Friendly Village Mobile Home Park were just awarded $40 million after they sued the owners. They say they did little after years of complaints of dangerous conditions. We're talking about complaints like raw sewage leaks, rat infestations, and the ground sinking and swallowing homes into what used to be a landfill. It just gets worse year after year after year. And these landlords that keep charging us more and more rent, it's ridiculous. And the fight is far from over. About 100 homeowners are still waiting for their day in court. Big political news in Mississippi tonight where Republican Cindy Hyde-Smith has defeated Democrat Mike Espy in a runoff election for U.S. Senate. With her win, the Senate balance of power is now set. Republicans gained two seats in campaign 2018, pushing their advantage to 53-47. Hyde-Smith had been leading in the polls but had several issues this month, including a public hanging comment in a state with a history of lynchings and a joke supporting voter suppression. Local firefighters just back from the deadly fire in paradise. And tonight they share a story of hope and survival amid the devastation. Plus this. Hey, good evening. I'm Chris Holmes from Live in Echo Park, where a wild police chase ended. Coming up, I'll show you why this chase had so many people talking. And hanging on for life, we'll show you what happened to the American tourist whose instructor forgot one little harness. And here's a look at the guests tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. 